Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. Today's video will be an automotive special, meaning the items shown today are most likely intended to be used for your car. I ordered a bunch of this stuff and I thought it would be nice if I kept it all together into one video. So I'm going to start with this reverse in camera kit and inside the package we have the camera module and uh, a series of very long wires that you can run up to your display or head unit. I went for this 45 degree style of uh, mounting for the camera and with the white enclosure because I plan to install this on my wife's car which is uh, white and I figured going for this style of enclosure and mounting style would integrate it better with the paint of the car and it would be less obvious on the back of the car like you would barely notice there is something changed in there. But this does come with some limitations. You'd have to install this on a flat horizontal surface parallel to the road so uh, it, it should go something like this because the uh, camera is angled for that mounting position and you'll likely end up seeing too much of the road or too much of the sky if you install it uh, otherwise. In terms of image sensor uh, when you order one of these if you go for the uh, cheapest you'll get a crappy sensor with poor low light capability so I spent a little extra and picked the Sony CCD option. I have checked the image quality of this with a small monitor and it looks nice and crisp. Definitely worth spending a little extra to get the Sony CCD sensor. You have two wire loops on the harness of the camera and these are for enabling or disabling the fixed trajectory lines or for mirroring the image. By cutting or connecting these wires you control that feature. The video output is obviously analog so make sure your head unit or display accepts this kind of analog input otherwise you will need uh, something like an RGB to uh, composite video adapter. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. Next, I got a rear view mirror with an integrated LCD screen. And once again, I thought this will uh, fit in better with the interior of the car instead of adding an external LCD. Now, the car in question does not have a color LCD unit. And uh, so the sensible option was to get uh, this kind of mirror that just uh, clips over the uh, existing mirror and has the integrated LCD. I had a bit of a disappointment with this product because the seller was offering the option of getting just the mirror or the mirror plus a camera package. Now I already had my camera so I wanted just the mirror and I didn't think that getting just the mirror option would mean they will not include the wire needed to uh, supply a uh, video signal to the mirror. So I had to order that one separately and will be arriving soon but until I receive it the way things are going in the, the postal system right now it might take a while. I believe the uh, resolution of this is 720 by 480 pixels and this also has a built-in uh, camera with a DVR function. I will try to disable that if possible because I don't need it but it's just so difficult to find these without the DVR function and still having a decent sized LCD. Next I have some body compound but this is actually polishing paste also known as body compound. I think I've shown this in a previous mailbag but it was a long time ago. I even used this stuff to fix scratches on plastics um, as it was recommended by viewers in the comments section but of course it can be used to fix some scratches in a car's paint. It's not a lot but uh, that works out okay for small jobs because if you have a lot of this stuff and you store it after breaking the seal it might get old and hard hard and you would have to throw it away. There is no clear indication on the hardness of this uh, paste or the uh, cutting power so I would use this with caution. As usual check the description below for links to these items. Next I also got a set of these uh, polishing pads with an M10 mounting rod that can be used for attachment to a power drill. 
The size is about uh, 4 inch or 10 centimeters diameter. So these are mostly intended to be used on small areas like when polishing a headlight or small portions of the body panels. The pads appear to be different density. Some are softer. For example, this green one is soft. The orange one is pretty hard and that affects how much cutting power you are putting onto the surface. But I will need to su study the, the subject a bit more before putting these to work and I would probably get some professional polishing paste before trying it on an actual headlight. Also, after polishing a headlight, some form of protection needs to be added either as a spray or as a protection film because otherwise the headlight would get scratched easily and the problem will return. Next, I have a set of uh, 200 pieces trim clips for automotive use, specifically for VWs. And uh, there's a hundred of these in uh, each pack. Uh, there are a bunch of models in here, but they all fit different models of VWs. You'll find these behind pretty much every trim panel or uh, interior plastic panel. And if the car is older, if the temperature is low and you try to remove one of these uh, uh, trim pieces, they tend to break these clips. And that's why it's best to keep your car in a garage before working on these kinds of things because the plastic gets softer around 20 degrees Celsius and there is a less chance to break something. Aside from these, the door interior panels will have a different style of clips which you will most likely need a couple if you decide to disassemble the door panels. This is an oil filter wrench socket also for VW. It's the 32 millimeters model. And uh, I would highly recommend you check the type of socket you need before ordering one because the first one I didn't check and I ordered the wrong model and I plan to do the oil change myself from now on so I had everything else with the exception of this socket to uh, disassemble the oil filter uh, enclosure. It's not a matter of saving the cost of paying a mechanic to do it because it cost me about 30 euros for a complete oil and filter change at the mechanic shop here but it's a problem of them being lazy and not doing the proper job and they don't exactly respond with a positive attitude if you start telling them how the job should be done. I'm talking about little things that are potentially important since they are specified in the official servicing procedures by the manufacturer. Like for example the fact that the oil drain screw cap should be replaced on every oil change or the fact that the fuel should be sucked from the fuel filter housing and the housing should be clean before installing a new fuel filter in. These are small things that I noticed the shop mechanics always skip at least the ones I visited anyway. So I'm curious, how do you guys handle this? Do you care for these little things? Are they done properly in your area? I would love to hear about that in the comments below. Ever since I was a little boy, I was fascinated by these uh, portable refractometers that I saw being used in car shops by mechanics. They seemed like this magical instrument that could tell if the coolant is the right mix for a certain temperature. I always thought these are super expensive instruments, but recently I stumbled upon one of these on AliExpress and the price seemed affordable enough and I got one. Now I don't know how accurate one of these has to be, they don't really specify any accuracy in the uh, AliExpress listing, but as a simple test I grabbed a sample of windshield cleaning liquid, it was the winter type rated for minus 25 degrees Celsius, I placed the sample on the refractometer and it showed exactly minus 25 degrees Celsius. So that inspired some confidence in this instrument being properly calibrated. There is also the option of uh, calibrating this by using distilled water at 20 degrees Celsius and then there is a screw you can turn for the uh, zero degrees adjustment. This instrument can measure multiple types of liquids by having different scales inside for antifreeze, add blue windshield cleaning liquid or battery fluid. So it's a pretty versatile instrument to have. Don't forget to check out the link for this in the description below the video. You've probably seen me get some trim removing tools which I showed in a previous mailbag video but this time I got some bigger ones so you would use these for bigger panels or clips that need to be forced open. These can definitely be used on the electronics bench as well and a good set to have in your toolbox in general. Over time I destroyed quite a few of those smaller plastic spudgers while trying to open enclosures or uh, pry open plastic trims that were too big and thick so they were clipped pretty strong. This whole set is just 10 bucks shipping included but when you consider there are 12 pieces included in this kit it's not such a bad deal. 
Also a random find on AliExpress is this uh, elastic cord with hooks on the end which can be super useful for tying things down inside your trunk. The length is 1.5 meters and I know some car manufacturers are better than others with respect to tying points in the trunk. I have a VW and that means I have about 8 or 9 tying points in the trunk of my car and I can use those and one of these cords to secure various stuff for transport. These hooks also permit you to adjust the uh, length of the rope between the hooks which is an added bonus and I quite like the design of these and the uh, rubber inside of them is uh, quite strong. I think these will be quite helpful to have. And these are the last two items in today's video. I have a roll of soundproofing foam and a pressure roller for installing the foam pads. Now the foam roll is 200 by 50 centimeters and 5 millimeters thick with adhesive backing and I plan to install this specifically in the trunk of my car to see if I can lower the road noise coming through those panels because I feel like the boost area gets the least amount of insulation from the factory so I would like to improve on that. I don't expect a great change because this is cheap foam from AliExpress so it's probably not the best density foam for acoustics but I'm hoping for a noticeable difference. One thing I'm concerned about though is the temperature because I have a TDI engine and when it's doing the DPF region the exhaust reaches some pretty high temperatures and especially during hot summer days I've noticed those temperatures get conducted into the boot area through the lower body panel. So I'll have to keep an eye on this and test its fireproofing properties because there was no mention of that in the AliExpress listing. I just cut a small piece of this uh, foam to test it with an open flame. So as you can see while this is burning with an open flame and melting it, it does self extinguish after a, a quick moment when removing the flame. So I think this should be okay for installing inside the car. But maybe you know more about this type of foam, maybe you've used it and you can share some of your experience in the comments below. For easy installment of the phone, I also purchased one of these roller tools to really get in there and press the foam into the complicated shape which is the bottom of the trunk. Uh, it should improve the adhesion between the foam panel and the car panels and make the whole thing easier to install. That was all for today. I hope you found something interesting to order. I would appreciate your feedback in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video.